Hi everybody. This is part four of today's supplemental lesson on velocity versus time graphs. As you can see here we have a velocity versus time graph. I'm going to show you how to get the total displacement of the object over the entire 32 seconds and the individual displacement of the object for all these little time intervals. So let's get started. Let's go for this first area right here. So in this area we have a rectangle. And this rectangle has a width of 0 to 10. So 10 seconds. Now its height has a height from 0 to 4 meters per second so that is 4 meters per second. Now if I find the area of this rectangle, I say that I can find the displacement of this object from 0 to 10 seconds. Let's see if that makes sense. First I'm going to take the width and the height. So I'm going to do the area is equal to the width times the height. Let's see if that works out. So here I'm going to take 10 seconds. I'm going to show the multiplication like this. Multiply by 4 meters per 1 second. I have 10 times 4, which is 40, divided by 1 is equal to 40. Let's find out the units. I see I have seconds in the top and the bottom, so I can cross them out. I'm left with meters, so I have 40 meters. Now earlier, if you remember, I said that area is equal to displacement. So since displacement is always measured in meters, then this makes sense. So here, the displacement from 0 to 10 is 40 meters. And I'm going to put a plus there for now. Keep an eye on that plus because it's going to make more sense later on. So let's take a look at the next area. Here I have a height of 0 and I have a width of 10 to 17 so that's 7. 0 times 7 is 0 so I'm going to have 0 area. That means I'm going to have 0 displacement. Let's double check if that makes sense. If my velocity is 0 between 10 and 17 seconds that means that this object is not moving. If it's not moving, then it's not gaining or losing any displacement. Therefore, the displacement between 10 and 17 must be 0. Okay, so that makes some sense. Let's move on. Let's find out the area of this guy right over here. From 17 to 22 seconds, I know that my width is going to be 5 seconds. I know that my height is going to be about 3 meters per second. So let's work it out for this time interval. So this time interval referred to 0 to 10 seconds and this next one is going to be from 17 to 22 seconds. So my height is 3 meters per second. So 3 meters per 1 second and multiplied by the width which is 5 seconds. Now notice I did it in the opposite direction but since it's multiplication it doesn't matter. You still come up with the same thing. So I have 3 divided by 1 which is still 3 multiplied by 5, which is 15. Let's find out the units. The seconds cancel out, and I'm left with meters. So here, from 17 to 22 seconds, I have a displacement of 15 meters. I'm going to put a plus there. Great. Now, let's work on this last area.
notice that it has a negative velocity. So let's see if that, how that plays in this next part. My width is going to be 22 to 32 seconds. So 32 minus 22 is 10 seconds. Easy enough. Now my height is going to be 3. But keep in mind this negative. We're going to use it later. So from 22 seconds to 32 seconds, I'm going to do my calculation. I have a 10 second width multiplied by a velocity of 3 meters per second. Now wait, remember I had that negative. I'm going to stick the negative right in there. So that equals 10 multiplied by negative 3 is negative 30 divided by 1 is still negative 30. The seconds cancel it out. I'm let it left with negative 30 meters. So this part has a displacement of negative 30 meters. So how do I find the total displacement if I know all the displacements for the little time intervals? This one was 40 from 0 to 10, 0 from 10 to 17, positive 15 from 17 to 22 seconds, and negative 30 from, 30 from 22 to 32 seconds. Well, all I have to do is add them up. So here, I'm going to have 40 plus 15 minus 30. So I'm going to have 40 plus 15 minus 30. Then I'm left with 25. So my total displacement for this movement is positive 25 meters. Thanks for listening.